backing down from any giant as I know how this story is as I know
Welcome to Popcorn and Prayer. Does this seem a little weird? Actually, part of what I'd like to do tonight is to de-weird prayer. I mean, think about it. What is prayer? Prayer is simply talking with God, having a conversation with God. That's simple and natural. But unintentionally, we've often made prayer weird. I mean, how have we done that? Well, You've heard me say before that we've turned it into making speeches to God. So how many of you like to make speeches? Mm, That's what I thought. Not very many of us do. In fact, public speaking is the number one fear in America. And public praying, even praying with a close friend, is probably not far behind for most people. So let's be honest, making speeches, that's hard. But having a conversation, we do it all the time. We often think, too, that we have to sound holy when we pray. And some people have even developed a special prayer voice. Oh, great and glorious God. It doesn't sound anything like them in real life. Or maybe we don't have a holy sound. Oh, look, there's Maisie. Yeah. And she loves popcorn, by the way. And some of you might be wondering, where's Lena right now? Here I am sitting here with a bowl of popcorn by myself. Lena is handling the technical side of this tonight. So kudos to Lena. Maybe she'll show up a little later, we'll see. So back to my thought, I said that sometimes we try to sound holy when we pray and uh, we develop a prayer voice, or maybe we try to use holy words, right? We sprinkle our prayers with lots of Christianese. We may even try to look holy, right? Bow our heads, fold our hands, close our eyes, maybe even scrunch up our face and look really, really serious. Now, none of this, let's be honest, none of this is wrong in itself, but it can be a little weird. I mean, imagine doing these things if you were just having a conversation with your best friend, trying to sound and look holy and make a speech. I'm betting that your friend would probably interrupt you pretty quickly and say, dude, why are you being so weird? I thought you just wanted to talk. Prayer is just that. It's just talking with God, having a conversation, simple and natural and honest. When we talk with God, we talk about subjects. I mean, just like a real conversation. And so we're going to give you several subjects to talk about tonight with God and time to listen to and see what he says. And prayer, just like conversations, can happen anywhere, in any setting. I mean, think about it. Conversations happen in the car, at home, at work, while we're on a walk, at the gym, at the golf course, even sitting on the couch, 
eating popcorn. And here's the thing, if we can have a conversation while we're sitting on the couch having popcorn, well, all we have to do is include God in the conversation, and it's prayer. So if you're sitting in your home alone tonight, just you and God, I want to encourage you to enjoy the conversation with him that you're about to have. And if you're with other people, with family or friends, I want to encourage you to have a conversation together, all of you together, with God. We call this praying conversationally. Take turns, talk by subject, and just have a conversation together with God. So grab your popcorn, grab your favorite snack, snuggle up with your favorite blankie, and let's pray. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you a prayer subject, and then I'm going to give you three minutes to just run with it, individually or together. So have fun. You're having a conversation with God and with each other. All right, so here's the first one. Prayer prompt number one is gratitude. Psalm 100 says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. One of my favorite ways to start a conversation with God is simply to say, thank you. Before I ask for anything, just thank you, thank you, thank you. What are you grateful for? Why don't you tell God right now? Let's just begin with thanksgiving. Lord, thank you so much for all that you've given us. You have blessed us so bountifully in so many ways. Thank you most of all for Jesus and the new life that he's given us, for grace that we're forgiven, that we're loved and accepted. Thank you so much. We have so much to be thankful for, Lord. Remind us of that and give us grateful hearts. In Jesus' name. Well, our second prayer prompt tonight is a little different. Maybe you've never prayed this one, but it's, 
Search me. Psalm 139, Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24 says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way that is everlasting. You know, this little prayer is often part of my conversations with God. I just tell him, search me, God, and tell me what you see. Tell me what you see that you like. Tell me what you see that you wish was different. This is a good time to just simply say, search me, and then listen. Listen to what God says to you and respond back to him. All right? Lord, we invite you tonight, and I hope we'll do this regularly, to just search us, search our hearts, see what's inside us, Lord, and reveal us to ourselves. And where there are things like the psalmist says that are offensive to you, well then, Lord, lead us in the way that's everlasting. Change our hearts and make us more like Jesus. Amen. Our third prayer prompt is what I call your one thing. Sometimes we call this our heart's cry. When you think about sitting down with God and being able to ask him for anything, what's the first thing that comes to mind? What's your one thing? What's your heart's cry that just rises up and demands to be heard? Well, we're gonna take the next three minutes to pray about that. Tell him your one thing and then listen for his response. Let's pray.
Lord, you know our heart's cry even before we voice it. Thank you for hearing us tonight, Lord. And help us, I pray. Help us every day be willing to bring those things that are on our hearts, the things that weigh us down, the things that we're concerned about, the things that just rise to the surface. Help us to bring those things and set them at your feet and trust you with them. Help us to give you our one thing. All right, the fourth thing I want us to pray about tonight is simply family. You know, I pray regularly for my family. And here's why I realized many years ago that if I don't pray for my family, who will? If I'm not praying for my kids or my grandkids, who will, if not me? If I'm not praying for my spouse or my parents or my brothers and sisters, my extended family, who will? You know, when Pastor Noel died, uh, I was on the phone, Lane and I were on the phone with one of his daughter-in-law and, and she said, who's going to pray for us now? All of us knew that Noel prayed for all of us, his whole family, every day. It was a regular thing for him. I think it'd be wonderful if we each learned to do the same thing. So we're gonna take the next three minutes and just pray for our family. You can pray for one member in particular, a few of them or all of them, that's totally up to you. But let's take the next three minutes and pray for our family. Lord, thank you so much for our families. I'm so grateful, Lord, for my wife. I'm so grateful for my kids and my grandkids. I'm so grateful for my extended family, for my mom, my sisters, my brothers-in-law, all of the, I've got a huge, huge network of a family, Lord. Thank you for them. And, uh, And I'm praying for them during this time that you keep them safe and keep them healthy. 
Uh, I have many other things too, Lord, and I'm sure everyone else does, but we're offering you tonight our prayers for our families. Amen. All right, here's the fifth thing we're gonna pray about, and that's this crisis that we're in right now, this coronavirus crisis. And I want us particularly to pray for people we know that are profoundly affected by this. Maybe they're sick, and I don't just mean sick with the coronavirus. They could be sick with anything. Let's pray for healing for them. Or maybe they're caring for the sick. They're in the medical profession or they're first responders. And let's pray for protection for them. Or maybe it's someone you know who's lost their job or their income because of this crisis. Let's pray for God's provision. Or maybe it's people who are just stuck at home and are lonely. And let's pray for connection. Again, many people have been profoundly impacted by this. Who do you know? And let's take a few minutes right now and pray for them. Well, Lord, we pray for the people we know and love who have been deeply affected by this current crisis. And we pray that you heal the sick. We pray that you comfort the lonely and connect them with people. We pray for those that are on the front lines of the medical response to this, that you protect them. We pray for people that are, that are struggling financially, that you provide for them. And we just pray that you would help us, your people, uh, get out there and love people. Help us to shine brightly and uh, do what you would have us to do during this time. In Jesus' name. Well, forgive me for a moment, but I, I've got to take a bite of popcorn. Mm, this is so good. Mm, oh my word. Um, okay, here's the sixth thing. Let's pray for each other. So if you're with other people right now, what I'd like you to do in this next three minute section is to just each of you take a turn and share. Here's what I'd like. Here's one thing I'd like to be prayed for. 
And as soon as you say it, everyone there in the circle is just gonna pray for you. Simple and natural, just like that. If you're alone, uh, you can tell God what you'd like. And then I want you to know, if you're alone, that I'm gonna devote my next three minutes praying for you. And so I'll be praying with you that God will hear and answer your prayer. All right, let's pray for each other. Well, Lord, uh, we lift our prayers up for each other and uh, something that we're charged to do every day, to pray with one another. And I wanna pray, my prayer tonight particularly is for those who are home alone, who don't have someone else to pray with. And I'm praying with them tonight that Lord, you would hear their prayer, their request, and uh, answer that and take care of them. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name, and Amy, or I'm sorry, Amy, uh, Maisie says amen too, yes. All right, here's our final thing. Our seventh prayer prompt is yield. I often like to finish my prayer times by just yielding to God. And what that means is it's me with my hands up saying, not my will, but yours be done. Whatever you want to do with me, Lord. And I give God a chance to speak to me. I just get quiet and listen. So I want to encourage you, these last three minutes, this is a little different, but instead of speaking the last three minutes, let's just sit and be still before God. Yield to him. Open your hands up and ask him to speak to you. Let's pray.
Lord, we yield to you tonight. In fact, we say, whatever you want to do with us, Lord, have your way. Have your way in our lives. And help us, like Samuel, we are uh, just reading this today in our Bible reading. Like Samuel as a boy, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Speak to us. We long to hear from you. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everyone. Hey, give yourselves a hand. See how easy that was? Prayer is just a conversation with God, and you can pray anywhere, anytime, in any setting, even on a couch with popcorn, with your dog, with your lovely wife. Mm-hmm. Lena has joined me for this last couple minutes, and uh, thank you, dear. Thanks for running the tech stuff for us. You did a great job. Hey, everyone, I hope to see you Friday night at the Good Friday service online, and it's going to be a really tender time of worship. We're going to take communion together in our homes. And then Pastor Michael has a short devotional thought for us. And then Easter. We're going to celebrate Easter online at our regular service times on Saturday and Sunday. And we've got some really fun things planned that I think the whole family will enjoy. And I'm going to give a talk on hope. So that's what's coming. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Have a great week, everyone.
when the darkness falls, it won't grieve it. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Oh, my God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you Turn it for good. You turn it. 